Today, Arsenal have been linked once again with Adamola Lookman, Nico Williams and Marcus Rashford. And it seems like there might be some substance to the Dan Asworth rumours. We're also linked with Vlahovic once again and Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Let me share my screen and let's get straight into business. Again, as I just said in relation to Marcus Rashford, Manchester United would sell Marcus Rashford at the latest by the summer. United would also be open to top offers in January. His sale would help deal with the club's FFP. Now, if we go here, it says Manchester United are actually open to offers for Marcus Rashford next month, people, which is January. The market is open with one reason behind their willingness to sell revealed in a report from Germany. Reports from Germany about what an English club's doing. I don't know if we should take stock in that, but nonetheless, <coughs> apologies. As I was saying, Manchester United are reportedly willing to offer listening to offers for Marcus Rashford in January. The 27-year-old has 138 goals for United since breaking into the team as an 18-year-old. He has failed to replicate that form, people. He netted 30 times during that memorable season of 2022-23. He is on currently on a five-year deal worth 325 grand per week, people. Apparently, the 27-year-old has shown signs of returning to his best since Amarin took over, but hasn't been able to nail down a regular place. According to Sky Sports Germany, United are open to selling their academy product, people, which do we believe this? Do we not believe it? Where are we at, people? Fueling rumours to Arsenal. Allegedly, the Telegraph also report that United are concerned about the forwards lifestyle away from the field and feel he's lacking focus. Sources have told the outlet that Rashford is contending with numerous distractions which may have impacted his efficiency on a match day. It's believed Rashford's salary where he's one of the club's highest earners means that if he was to leave it is something that would benefit United's FFP. Now Rashford's always been linked with moves away. He is somebody that obviously is earning a lot of money and at 27 years of age in his peak you don't really know what you're going to get from Marcus Rashford. Even when he's had those high scoring seasons you never, you don't quite feel the decision makings there now granted I think Arsenal fans since summer and beyond that want a striker want a, a, a left winger and whatever especially when you consider the inconsistencies of Trossard Gabriel Jesus the non-existent not by his own fault Raheem Sterling and obviously Martinelli Rashford's always going to be someone linked with Arsenal I mean he's English he's homegrown obviously a lot of Arsenal fans do this thing where any player that's down on their hard luck they think you know Mikel Arteta and armor over his shoulder and he can get something out of them in which you know Rashford's got the raw capabilities to really have a good career if he hasn't had one already. But when you consider the fact that he's contracted until 2028, he's, you know, obviously there's a lot of marketability. He's one of the household names at Manchester United. The wages he's on, it's not my money. I definitely don't have 300 grand to pay someone weekly, but there's a lot of unanswered questions if Arsenal were to sign him away from the myth that Mikel Arteta can turn wine into uh, water into wine, essentially. You don't know what you're getting and there's already a lot of unanswered questions in relation to Arsenal attackers already so he's going to be on big wages probably not going to earn what he's going to earn at Manchester United but he'd probably be one of Arsenal's top earners they're going to want a decent fee especially if they sell to a quote-unquote rival and again is it necessarily clear that Marcus Rashford if he came and was played on the left wing that he is going to be a starter is he necessarily a curtain raiser I think not I like the lad and then obviously you look at the off-field stuff now again I want to stay clear from them kind of things because we don't know Rashford the papers say things all the time and what not really so I don't want to do too much in that but where you look at Mikel Arteta's Arsenal at the moment it seems like the players are quite stable they're all getting in long-term relationships every week somebody's having a kid or be or or, or or pregnant is that something that is going to tie into what we've got you know I mean I'm not saying Rashford is like this but Manchester's obviously a great city and you can do a lot and he flies all over the world but London there's a lot to do and you know when players sign for London-based clubs obviously the lifestyle or what you can do in London whether you want to go clubbing or sightseeing or the various other distractions or things you can do. These are all prevalent. Marcus Rashford is financially free. London is a millionaire slash billionaire playground, as we see. So it doesn't make sense to me, people, if I'm honest with you. And we don't know if he's a curtain raiser. Away from that, from one winger to another, allegedly Adamola Lookman would accept an offer from Arsenal should it be forthcoming in 2025. Now, Atalanta are flying high in Serie A. Adamola Lookman's doing well in Italy and he's shining week in, week out. I would love him, love to sign him. He's contracted until 2026. I'm personally doubtful if he leaves in January, but you'd imagine Atalanta, if they can't get him to agree a new deal, a brace for offers, not just from Arsenal, but elsewhere come the summer. According to Give Me Sport, they've reported that the Nigerian 
Nigerian sensation would like to return to England at the end of the season. Arsenal have emerged as Lookman's biggest suitors in recent months, with Give Me Sport reporting the Gunners are strongly considering making a move for the player in 2025. Lookman himself is more than open to the move, and Atalanta are likely to sanction the sale at the right price at the end of the season as his contract expires in 2026. They won't sell him in January, but reports from Italy claim he'll be uh, they will be open to letting him leave if a club pays 50 million euros or more in the summer. Obviously, he scored a hat trick in the Europa League final. Currently, this season, he's got 10 goals and five assists in all comps, which is a lot more than a lot of our players have to say, people. So it is what it is. Apparently, PSG, PSG were looking at him and they allegedly turned his head. So he's someone that's going to be of interest to everybody. And I think the left wing spot, obviously, left wing can play on the right as well. That is right up our street. Continuing the theme with left wingers, Arteta demands Nico Williams in January to rescue Arsenal's title challenge. Now, the headline sound, sounds great. David Ornstein did say that Nico Williams is more than open to moving to a Premier League club recently, and we did cover that a few days ago. But it did seem like Barcelona were the ones, and it kind of had his head turned. Now, ultimately, he chose to stay, people. But according to Charles Watts, he says Arteta wants to sign an attacker during the transfer window as he feels the Gunners are lightweight in this area. I mean, we were saying that in the summer. Apparently, he has a reported transfer fee release clause of 58 million euros, which is not unreachable for Arsenal. I mean, I'm all for it. If I'm honest with you, I'm all for it. I think there's deeper problems. You know, I think the way we're playing in the final third, yeah, if you sign better attackers, they probably get more goals and stuff like that. But I don't think it's as clear cut as you get the tools and 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 simply put the jobs done in that regard. So I would be, you know, for me, bring Nico Williams. For me. Bring Adam Ola Lookman would not be against Rashford necessarily, but it's a mixed bag. And we've already got a number of players, apart from Bakayo Saka in that front line, that are good players, but we don't know what we're getting. We don't know what we're getting week in, week out from Gabriel Jesus, from well, Raheem certainly don't play, but him, Martinelli, and um, you know, Trossard, everybody that plays on that left hand side. Kai Havertz, obviously, I do think he's a decent player, but in terms of being that proven goal scorer, probably need an upgrade. But Kyle Saka is the only one that you can bet on and we can't be expected to do it every week. Dan Asworth apparently has been added to Arsenal's list to be their new sporting director. Apparently reportedly considering a move for Dan Asworth following his shock exit from Manchester United where he only spent five months. Now, naturally, you know, Richard Garlick knows him from his time probably at the FA and West Brom. He's obviously probably known in the footballing circuit. Whether he wants to jump back into a job now or, or whatever is another thing, but naturally he's going to be on the list. I can't tell you why, and it's not really because of the Man United thing. It's just a gut feeling with no evidence. I don't think he's the man for the role, if I'm honest with you. But naturally, it would make sense for him to be added to the shortlist because, once again, he's worked with a director at Arsenal already. They've worked together at West Brom. They know each other from the circuit, so it makes sense. For me, I want Luis Campos, who, as we know, apparently has had a bust up with Luis Enrique at Paris Saint-Germain. Luis Campos' contract is winding all the way down at PSG. I'm sure they want him to to. Uh, to sign a new one. I think he's got a great proven track record, you know, whether it's at Leo or Monaco. I think we need an experienced sporting director in place of Edu. And apparently Arsenal and Manchester United are looking at bringing Campos to either club, which I hope would be us, especially when it comes to unearthing gems, people. You know, it wouldn't be Arsenal transfer news without being linked with Vlahovic. I think the Vlahovic case study is done. Obviously, he's a good goal scorer, but is he going to press for 90 minutes and drop into midfield and do all those other facets that Mikel Arteta wants from a striker? I don't know. Also, you know, it's easy to link us with Vlahovic because we tried to get him before, because we need a striker, and obviously because Juventus are trying to get him to sign a new contract, so there's a bit of game gamesmanship in that regards in which obviously they're going to have to force to be to, to sell him David Ornstein spoken about Jokerez, who I think he's going to go Man United. He's, you know, Man United is a big club, Premier League wages, your former managers there. Um, I've always said I think Jokerez is a good player, but I think it's more paper talk than Arsenal. I'm not saying Arsenal don't like him and he's not on a shortlist. I just don't think he's that high up in, in it, really and truly. Ornstein has said, can you predict the next... Well, they asked him, can you predict the next biggest move in the transfer market? Maybe Victor Jokerez next summer. I think he'll go somewhere. So that is a big story to break and that will cause ripples within the industry and the market, people. So we'll have to watch that one very closely. Mikel Arteta, on injuries currently, people, he said, we have to manage a lot of players. Some of them won't be fit for tomorrow, which we're playing Monaco. Some of them are still doubts. We have 24 hours to make those decisions. Hopefully, we'll make the right ones. 
we know Arteta plays a bit coy with fitness. You know, the journalists have been saying certain players have been seen at training, certain players haven't. It is what it is. We have to accept the challenge. There are opportunities for other players. We have to accept the reality and move forward. Um, so we'll have to see. He said, I'm really happy with how we're playing. I'm happy with how the team is adapting and the players are making an effort to play in different positions. Mm. And then he said, Tini is ready, he's training real well and he'll have an opportunity for sure. He's earned it, he's willing to do it. And when that happens, we'll have to give him a chance. And we all know Arteta is going to have to utilise his squad. We've once again been linked with Arda Geller, as have Bayern Leverkusen. And apparently they're stealing the march on potentially bringing him. And they're looking at him potentially as a replacement for Florian Wirtz, who probably leaves in the summer. Now I would love Arda Geller. It seems like he's starting to finally get some football at Real Madrid. Surely a bit like Martin Odegaard, who I Ironically, went from Madrid to Arsenal. Surely Real Madrid loan out Arda Galera a couple of times, see his level, and then if he comes back and it's not to be, then sell him. In which, if he was to go on loan to Leverkusen under Xabi Alonso, which probably is going to end up managing Madrid, could be a good thing. I'd love Arda Galera. But it would be, you know, it's easy to link us with him. And apparently Arsenal understood to have approached Giller's camp to gauge his availability and possible interest in a switch to the Premier League. Likewise, Leverkusen have maintained contact with him and they tried to get him when he was at Fenerbahce, people. Um, which, if you're, I don't know for Leverkusen, admittedly, but, you know, at Arsenal, are you guaranteed to start Arda Giller unless Odegaard moves to the eight, unless you play there, unless you play off the left, unless Saka moves to the left and you play off the right? Obviously, there's a lot of game time and things like that. And I definitely wouldn't be against another creative player because we've let Fabio Vieira and Smith roll go. We've got young Ethan learning. Don't want too much expectations on him. We've also been linked with Dominic Calvert-Lewin people. Apparently, we're weighing up a £20 million move. He's out of contract at the end of the season so would we really commit 20 million in january when you can get him for free a few months later now a few years ago the 27 year old was you know scoring a lot of goals and doing all right since then it hasn't quite been that he gets a lot of injuries and you apply an arsenal tax it don't necessarily look great there once again arsenal chelsea and manchester united are looking at vlahovic all of these teams going back to the summer wanted a striker so you have to take it with a pinch of salt we need to sort william saliba's contract out and apparently we're willing to um, he's ready He's ready to commit his long-term future to Arsenal, despite allegedly being Real Madrid's number one target. Simultaneously, Barcelona, Manchester United and Arsenal are ready to battle it out to sign Jonathan David on a free transfer. Apparently, a hearing into the Premier League's 115 charges against Manchester City has now been concluded. The verdict will be delivered in a couple of months. This week, you've actually seen that it's 130, 140. Whether they get convicted or whatever is none of my business, but it's here. I would have loved us to sign KK of Napoli. Allegedly, he's close to signing a contract extension until 2029. Um, would you take a chance on Victor Osman, who allegedly has a January break clause, people? Apparently, United could be willing to pay 62 million release clause, which surely rules out getting Jokerez. Chelsea and Arsenal are set to battle it out to sign 19-year-old defender Victor Reis from Palmeiras. Um, and it does look inevitable that Fabio Vieira leaves, as Charles Watts has said here. Fabio Vieira, paraphrasing, is obviously obviously getting some minutes for, for Porto now. Uh, um, as you see here, Charles Watts has said, you know, it is a touch of faith that there's no buy clause for Porto in the Fabio Vieira deal, which doesn't necessarily rule out a move from, Ars um, from Arsenal back to Porto. But did Porto really, you know, whatever asking price Arsenal would ask for, would Porto really be willing to pay that? Are they really going to do that? Probably not. You can never rule it out, but it looks bleak. And, you know, I'd, he's doing all right at Porto, but I would hardly say he's pulling up any trees, people. So, yeah, man, we'll have to see. But right now, I don't know what we do. I think I speak for myself where I say I'd love to sign a number eight, a striker and a versatile winger. I actually feel we need another defender because, boy, on the face of it, we've got a lot of great defensive options, but Tommy Asu, Zinchenko pick up injuries. Gabriel's missing at this at the moment. I think Kivio's okay for the squad, but the drop-off is far too much. We've been probably old to see Benjamin White not be available for a prolonged period. We've played him into the ground to a degree. Anything happens to Saliba, once again, there's a drop-off. Calafuri pick, has picked up a couple of knocks and obviously with Timber he's done very well to come back post ACL and doing quite well but we need to be a bit cute and clever and obviously the injuries have a knock on effect for the existing players people because then you've got less players to pick from but Arteta there's a lot of games coming you're going to have to utilise your squad whether it is Kieran Tierney whether it is young Ethan whether it is Raheem Sterling who a lot of us forget is at the club but we'll have to see man boy